My name is Oliver Picard and I play with classic cars on some of the world's most beautiful roads for a living. That Porsche rear engine blood shining through. In 2020, I went to Retromobile Paris and saw some of the most exquisite, handmade, hand-finished and expensive cars on the planet. On returning home, the pandemic hit and I decided that the time for dreaming was done. I wanted to build my dream. I wanted to build the car that I had been designing since childhood. So with the help of my aerospace engineer and rallyist father, Andrew, we set about trying to find the perfect project. We found it rotting in a side yard in Normandy. Crashed, twisted, broken, buckled and fire damaged, a GTM. We dragged it home and tore it apart. Re-engineered from the ground up. Engine, suspension, fuel system, drivetrain, even the seating position. Everything. Bespoke, one of one. This is Project Mosquito. Good morning. Good morning. Do you like my dust sheet? It's got mouses. So this morning, uh, before we start work, we've got some clarifications because we've got a lot of new viewers, which is lovely. Hello, new viewers. Um, but a lot of people don't understand what's happening. So perhaps you should go back and watch the other episodes. Yes, but there's like 40, well, this is episode 46, I think. Oh. So as a quick clarification, the reason why there's a back end and not a front end, right, is because the back end width is dictated by the drive shafts, whereas the front end width is just dictated by geometry so you have to get your you have to get your rear end in first and then that way we've got all of our widths to do our front end because it's all dependent on this back end uh, the other thing is this car does have a body it's here and the front end's up there um, and this is a euro spec well it's actually a british uh, uk dm spec because obviously K-series engines, a lot of them were made in the UK, a lot of the other ones. This is a UK spec DC5 Type R Integra K20A2. Not the K20A2 that the Americans got. It's different. It's got the aluminium sump and stuff from the Japanese engine, but it, it's basically the Japanese engine, but it doesn't have the crazy high compression. It's only nine point something to one, I think. Yeah. But it does have the heavy, heavy duty drive shafts. It has the heavy duty drive shafts, and this one has different cams because it's got skunk two cams, it's got a, a drop in uh, baffle, and it's got the RBC intake from the Euro Quad Type R, which is supposed to be the better intake, with a throttle body spacer and the, um, I think it's an EP3 throttle body. And it's got the gearbox, it's the second gen dc5 type r european gearbox which doesn't have the factory limited slip diff because i didn't want one but it is six speed but it is six speed manual um with the silly lockout for reverse and so you can't start it without pushing the clutch in which we'll get rid of because i don't like them and they they damage your thrust bearings in the engine anyway so we're not going to be working on the engine today because we're not bothering with that until later and we're not going to be working on the front end because we're not quite there yet we need a bit of a break after doing all of this this was a lot of work and a lot of maths and it was a bit heavy wasn't it yep. so we're going to give ourselves a break and when anthony brought my seats i realized that my lotus elise mark one bucket seats aren't quite the shape that i thought they were and so we need to adjust the center tunnel uh, in order to kind of get me more central in the car because my head's a little bit close to this top roll cage tube. One of the issues with street driving a car with a roll cage is that if you want to use normal seat belts, it becomes problematic because the last thing you want to do is bang your head on this tube. And me being very tall, it's a bit of an issue, so we're going to move me more central. Well, that's a good thing because it moves the weight more central in the car. After all, I'm 80-something kilos, and the more central I am, the better. Down, 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 down. Hey. 
driver's bucket here. You. Ah. Yeah, I need to come further forward. A bit more. Yeah. I have no idea whether I'm straight anymore or what. Do you stop back properly? Hmm? Do you stop back properly? Yeah, bum right against the thing. Supposed to be a lot further away, don't I? Right there. Ideally. No, away from there, here. Where's your gear stick? Move your uh, I need the centre console. Move your Oh, that's a good stick. Yeah, a bit further back than that, yeah. Yeah, gear stick about there. A bit further back here. Yeah. yeah? If you go in this way, mm -hmm. just hold to this as well. Yeah. Which is no bad thing. So the pedal box is further this way. Mm -hmm. The um, no, it's not. It's the centre cons console is not intrusive at all because we designed it with enough room for money. This isn't a problem for any other human being, including my partner. My partner is like well below, but just because I'm so big. The issue that we've got is that the seat from here to about here tapers out, and that's basically like the widest point of the the seat is the hip. And so what we have to do is make space here for that hip so that I can move my seat further this way, basically. But because the centre tunnel tapers and then there's the ladder section underneath it, we need to figure out how much of the ladder section we actually need to adjust because it might only be a tiny bit. Now, this isn't an FIA style cage, quite obviously, if you're familiar with um, like racing and motorsport, this is not a motorsports cage. It's made of motorsports stuff, but it doesn't follow motorsports regulation because it's not a racing car, it's a road car. But it is well over and above what you'll find in any sort of road car. But I still want to stick to regulations as far as being able to take this car on a track. And famously, GTMs are impossible to fit in with a helmet on and, and be within modern regulations, which is... Not a strange thing in the world of like classic racing. You'll find a lot of Lotus Europas that do track work. I actually have a hole cut in the roof and a, a hoop out the top of the roof because they're actually the same height as a GTM roughly. Um, I didn't want to do that. And that's why I migrated the roll bar out the back. But it's just a, a matter of kind of trying to fit me in. Like I said, this isn't an FIA style cage. I didn't want an FIA style cage. This isn't a racing car. This cage is more for rigidity, more than anything. I never actually plan on crashing this car. That's your last resort, you know what I mean? Everyone keeps saying to me, oh, at least you've got a, at least you've got a cage, but I never plan on actually testing this cage. <laughs> uh, my methods of not dying will be first being seen, second being heard, and then third having enough power to get the heck out of the way, and then fourth, having actual crash safety. Because the, the best crash in the world is the one that you don't have. And uh, that's one of the reasons for the ground clearance and the suspension travel and all of, all of that over the place super, with super narrow roads and loads of tractors. And some of them are like big fast track tractors. And uh, a lot of the farmers, they work long hours and they're very tired. And so it's up to me to get out of the way of them and not them to get out of the way of me. And in such a low car, I'm going to be under a lot of hedgerows. So visibility of me won't be great. It's one of the reasons I've mentioned on Twitter, I don't want to paint this car a dark colour. But the idea of having enough ground clearance, enough suspension is so that I can actually drive into a ditch if I ever needed to without bending the car or damaging the car or even just onto a grass verge just to get out the way. I do it often in my 2CV. It's part of driving a car here in, uh, in such a rural area. So now 
what we've got to do is chop out this much of the ladder. Well, Merrim can be where I am now, and then, oh, I will elbow it first, because your elbow's down when you're changing gear. You don't change gear like that. You know what I mean? Your elbows are down, because the steering wheel's quite far forward, so it'll be fine. But you can't do both sides. You can only do one side. Because it's a super wide tunnel, this. Anyway, like, how wide's an elbow? <laughs> right, Merrim, so you need to be able to get in without moving the seat. Okay. All right, so one leg forward. That's it. That's it. Swing your legs round. <laughs> Without moving the seat. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, dear. Hi. Oh, yeah. Is this and Miriam has no problem at all in any. This is what a normal, what are you, five, seven, something like that in, in American numbers? What's that in centimetres? What? How tall are you in centimetres? Uh, 170. 170. 1 meter 70. 175, huh? No, I'm no. not that tall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you're tiny, everyone's tiny to me. No, 170. Yeah, you, Miriam's got no trouble at all, yeah? No. Put your elbow there. Down. See? More than enough room, yeah? And I can change gear, and because it's here, yeah? Not and it's not, here. like, I'm not doing that, am I? Yeah? So because I'm not reaching down to change gear, I'm not going to be elbowing her in the face. I'm going to be down like that. Which is how I like to drive anyway. It's twice as much as you need. Yay. And there's plenty of room for harnesses. Yeah, yeah. Merrim's a lot further down than I am. A lot more lead down. I don't think I can drive like this. Just no, so you aren't going to be driving. Yeah, no, but it is very comfortable. Need, too comfortable. Yeah, she's a bit <laughs> You're too far down. You need to sit up a bit. Sit up? Yeah. Oh, okay. Come on, bum off your seat. So oh, bum, bum off. No, it's a tiny piece of wood. You I can't slide it too far back. Right, is that better, Dad? Yeah. Is better? Sit back. Sit back. You, you, you're a bit yeah, precarious, my yeah, love, I'm it, sorry. It is a little bit more forward now. Yeah? Yeah. Seems more sat yeah. up than like. Better? Slounged. Right, Merriam's seat's pretty much perfect where it is. So I don't think it even needs, this doesn't even need cutting in, does it? It's perfect, that. The reason why we're doing this is one, to check ergonomics and elbow room. And the second reason is because on long journeys, you tend to drive more than me, don't yeah. you? Longer distances. Yeah, because I get tired. I'm, I'm one of these people, I'm very aware of my limits. And I'm a, I, I like to think of myself as a good driver. But I also, part of being a good driver is knowing your limits. And on very long journeys, I get really tired, whereas you're better at, yeah. better at that than me. Distance, yeah. yeah. And so sat on a motorway for long periods of time, I need to be just as safe in the passenger seat as I am here sat in the driver's seat. Because this is a left-hand drive car, if you didn't know. Yeah. So, are you comfy? Yeah, very comfortable. <laughs> well, I'm going to struggle getting you out now, aren't I? <laughs> I live here now. I live here now. Right. Come on. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Back to your, get back to your own channel. Oh, by the way, I have a channel. It's called the yeah. Merriam and Oliver channel. Yeah. Um, there'll be a button to the, at the end of this video that's a link to that video. I've had loads of people asking me about it. There's a button at the end of every video that's got my face, Mer well, Merriam's face, my face, and the cat oh, in it. <laughs> so click on that one, and it'll take you to the other channel. First time it's been out of the garage. Chunky three-quarter shot. While we've got it outside, we thought we'd put it next to Jolene just to have a little bit of a comparison. Because it's out, so yeah, might as well. Ooh. That gives you just an idea of how low this is, because that's about ride height.
because we can. So last night we had a play about with the MX-5 fitment kit for this uh, for these Lotus seats that came with my seats, thank you Anthony. And they have pre-made brackets which we are now going to kind of remake, aren't we? Because they're too heavy. Take it in, dress it up. Jobs a good one. You know, we started off this video saying this week we're gonna have an easy one by just notching a <laughs> notching a centre tunnel and like making some seat brackets and making stuff that we've already got fit each other. It's been turning the arse. <laughs> A bit of a bear. Um, that's an insult to bears. No, I, it's been a, <laughs> it's been more hassle and more of a pain than the suspension was. We should have just jumped front end. Like, it's just like I'm not having a passenger seat now. That's it. Turn that turn that other bucket seat in for a rocking chair. I can't I can't be bothered. <laughs> Shall I just hold it, sir? We've had to make one seat bracket further up than the other because the floor on one side is not the same as the tunnel on the other. And of course, they won't be sliding because, well, it's in a tunnel. Tell you what we should do. Tell you what will make us feel better. We should trim the inner sills. I bet there's a lot of people watching these videos that have never seen these because yeah. we made these in a real early episode and these are the inner cells. The idea behind them is basically one of the root ideas behind this car and that is rather than making a chassis and a roll cage, we made a chassis that's also a roll cage. That way you've only got one thing rather than two so your car's half the weight. And rather than making plates that attach the chassis to the roll cage, as they do in many kind of grassroots 
um, racing cars and, and even some professional racing cars, like you'll often see dimple dyed plates here that attach the A-pillar and, uh, and the roll cage together to create a stiffer chassis. We just made our inner sills dimple dyes. It's a, a bit of a, a salute to the Murepi, which is one of my favorite uh, supercars of all time. Also the Bizarrini Manta, there's loads of them. And also aircraft of, uh, of the Second War, things like Flying Fortresses and stuff like that, were full of big dimple dyes and it allows us to paint inside the sills, which is kind of handy. And uh, they, these are one mil thick, but it's super strong. But these are supposed to fit in here. Unfortunately, somebody has, oh, wrong way, <laughs> wrong one, it's that one. Um, somebody has put in some rear suspension and so these no longer fit. So now what we're going to do is cut them to length. Come on, tell me that doesn't look kick ass. Here's the thing, right? If you're gonna spend 10,000 hours making anything, make something super cool. There are people who spend thousands of hours and they make like a, a model ship that won't fit out of the living room. But if you're gonna build something stupid, make it awesome and stupid. <laughs> That's my motivational rant for this week. <laughs> oh. Okay, that pull, pull that bit out and go through that. That's it. There's something absolutely wonderful about the smell of tires. I just love it. Like that new tire smell it was my favorite thing about going to bike shops as a kid. Yeah. That's it. We barely need arches up front. Not bad. How much we got sticking out? Ooh. I almost got it right. It's got bigger wheel arches on the front than it does on the back because I don't think, I think this is a much later front end than the back end. Like much, much later, as in a different company made it. <laughs> in fact, that one definitely does. The red bit, because that's got balsa wood in it. So that's like, it, that, I think that's hairy. <laughs> How many racing cars have you had? <laughs> There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not, see, it's quite cosy. Very cosy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, no, but... We fit. We fit. Yeah. I mean, our knees aren't touching. Nope. If we were in a Stratos, our, our knees would be touching. We won't have a centre console. Well, Dad, it's... 
snug. I was going to say a car, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> or rather, most of a car. See, most people only think we've made half a car. Yeah. When in reality, we've made about a third. <laughs> But I am really, really happy with what we've made. I mean, it's, it looks stunning. Yeah. Obviously, we've got to do an awful lot of body work because oh, yeah. the wheels don't really fit. No, they fit. They just don't fit the body. Yeah. They fit the the, the engineering's there. That's all yeah. right. They've just got a... they've got, gone the woods travel. <laughs> but a glass. I love it. Yeah. Looks superb. What is shocking is how little of a wheel arch we need at the front end. Yeah. Right, that's very little. And that just shows how much wider these cars got over the years. Yeah. Because ah, originally they're 10 inch wheels, isn't it? Yeah. And I think the back end is made for either 10 or 12 inch wheels and not for 13s, whereas the front end's made for 13s where you're 175, 50. Yeah. So it makes sense that a 195 is like that much wider. But I love it. It's comfy. It is. It's really comfy. The seats are wonderful. I was really nervous about the seats. There was a guy in one of the Lotus groups on Facebook that said that um, his Mark 1 Elise was nowhere near as comfortable as his Europa. But I think that gentleman may have been a bit rotund. Yeah. Because I tell you what, I won't be able to eat many pies and still be able to get in this thing. But I fit beautifully and it's very comfy. I mean, the these, right, these pump-up bolsters are... A revelation. Every single seat in the world should have a little pump-up bolster. Because they're brilliant. Yeah, it's super comfy. Yeah, I'm going to sneeze. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. Uh, that's been one of my issues this week. I've been riddled with hay fever. Um, I have really like, debilitated hay fever for like three weeks a year. And this is, well, three months nearly. <laughs> but this is one of those months. And... Uh, I'm amazed we've made as much progress as we have. But we've we've literally run out of time. And it's funny, because this was supposed to be an easy job. Yeah, we set up. We first set up, we'll have a nice easy week, because we're yeah. doing suspension. Oh, we'll get it done in a day and a half. And three days later... We've moved a seat that much. <laughs> but we've also trimmed our inner sills and weighed some seat brackets for this side. So yep. we've got our pattern made for our seat brackets, so we can make seat brackets for that side. It all comes together, eventually, and this just shows that. The reason why I wanted to put all of this together like this is to show you that it, it, eventually it all comes together. You know, we make one... Some people make one video a month, some people make one video every two weeks. Making weekly car content is really difficult because you've got to make weekly progress on something that's incredibly time-consuming. Yeah. But... And fit everything else in as well. Yeah, and, and fit life in. But... It just shows you make one tiny piece and another tiny piece and another tiny piece and eventually the jigsaw all fits together. And uh, it's beautiful. Now, we are going to be changing the body a bit. There are some things that obviously need to happen on the body, like Dad said, the arches. Um, but also there's loads of spider cracks in it and it was on fire and all sorts. <laughs> but like the, a lot of people have been asking me questions about the back window. The back window frame, uh, there will be a back window in it. It's just going to be a slightly different shape. That's it. It's that simple. Uh, this bottom bit will be removable. And, but there will be a back window in it. I've just dropped it. <laughs> but there will be a back window in it um, that's very similar to the original one. And at a glance, you won't even be able to tell the difference. But uh, I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm comfy. I could actually sit here for a while. That might have something to do with the fact that I'm knackered. Because <laughs> uh, some, week, some weeks it's... Some weeks making weekly videos is easy. Everything comes together and it just flies along. Other weeks you start doing something and it just fights you. Yep. Having said that, we have had to like re-engineer a major part of the structure of the car. Yeah, but it's done now. Yeah. Well, it's a good job we're recovering these seats because I smell. Uh, I'm covered in grinder dust and sweat. We've spent most of the day working in full sun and it's been well over 30 degrees. But... I couldn't be happier. No, no, it's going on well. All these little bits, they all add up. And tell me what you think of, well, tell us, what you think of all of this. And tell me what you th what's your favourite bit of the car so far. Do you like the inner sills? Do you like the fact that we redid the sills to the contour of the body rather than them being a different profile? Tell me what you think. Um, what would you do? And uh, please be awesome to each other. 
Don't forget, there will be two buttons at the end of the little montage. We'll do some beauty shots because I know everybody likes those. But at the end of it, there will be two buttons. One will be to subscribe to this channel. And the other one is for the Mary Ann and Oliver channel, which is my partner and I's channel with our house and our garden and all of the stuff that doesn't happen in this workshop. And there'll be the playlist for these mosquito videos as well as a recommended video. So thank you all for watching. Please be awesome to each other. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you all next week in the next one. Bye-bye. Now we get the very embarrassing two very tired men trying to crawl the way out of a tiny sports car. <laughs> Ready? It's not so bad actually, because you can grab it, can't you? Camera in the way. It's not so bad. <laughs> not until there's doors on it, anyway.